Welcome to World Med School. My name is Lucille Bloomberg. I'm an infectious disease specialist in South Africa. In this micro lecture, I'm going to talk about the symptoms of malaria. Clinical presentation of malaria. Early diagnosis of malaria is critical to ensure early treatment and a successful outcome. Misdiagnosis and treatment delays are, however, common because malaria pre may present with very non-specific signs and symptoms in many communities and amongst healthcare workers. There is frequently a low index of suspicion for malaria and malaria is a rapidly progressive disease requiring urgent treatment. Symptoms and signs of malaria may present as early as seven days after exposure with a usual range of 10 to 20 days elapsing after being bitten by an infected mosquito. Longer incubation periods are noted in some cases of falciparum malaria, particularly in patients who've been taking some form of prophylaxis, which has not been effective, or they've not taken it in a compliant way, or they may be on other antibiotics, which may have some mild antiplasmodial effect. The onset of symptoms is typically sudden. Malaria symptoms in adults and in children differ. Most commonly, uh, malaria presents as an influenza-like illness in adults, and the three commonest uh, symptoms are fever, headache, and rigors. Typically, these occur in paroxysms with the onset of fever, then shivers, then sweats. In between the paroxysms, there may be a period of almost 48 hours during which the patient may feel relatively well um, and there are no obvious signs and symptoms. However, um, as the malaria progresses, these periods may be reduced and the uh, symptoms may be more continuous. Myalgia and fatigue are very common symptoms of malaria but are very nonspecific. Loss of appetite may be noted and in some patients they may complain of nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. Malaria symptoms in children are much more subtle. There is usually a history of fever, lethargy is common, parents may notice poor feeding, vomiting and diarrhea may be noted, and particularly in children uh, with complicated malaria, there may be a history of rapid breathing. The symptoms of severe malaria uh, are particularly important to note because they do impact on the choice of treatment and the urgency with which it needs to be given. So any child uh, or patient who is unable to drink, uh, a young child who is not breastfeeding, repeated vomiting, patient being unable to sit or stand, prostration uh, are particularly important to note. Shortness of breath is a very important symptom of complicated malaria and cerebral malaria present with impaired consciousness an agitated child, or even the presence of convulsions. Yellow eyes and dark urine may also be an indication of the presence of severe malaria. Certain groups of patients are at particularly high risk for the, for the development of severe malaria. Any non-immune person who develops malaria and there is a delay in treatment may develop severe malaria. But pregnant women, those in the postpartum period, are particularly at risk. Infants, young children below five are an important group, elderly patients, splenectomized patients, and those who are immunocompromised, particularly those with HIV AIDS, are particularly at risk for the development of severe malaria. Malaria symptoms mimic many other infections and vice versa. Many diseases that are common in the same areas where malaria occurs may look like malaria. Fever and rigors occur in malaria, but they also are common features of influenza. And if you look back on patients who died of malaria, influenza was often the first, the second, the third misdiagnosis. Dengue, typhoid, African tick bite fever, and East African trypanosomiasis are important considerations in patients who develop fever and rigors who live in areas where these diseases occur. Common diseases like urinary tract infections may present with fever and rigors. In fact, any common bacterial infection 
may present in a similar way, including septicemia. Viral hemorrhagic fevers are often confused in the early stages um, with the symptoms uh, presenting that one would uh, find in patients with malaria. Patients with a history of jaundice or yellow discoloration may initially be misdiagnosed as having a viral hepatitis and yet um, may be malaria. And in fact, if a history of jaundice is present and malaria is considered, this would always indicate severe malaria. Change in mental state, convulsions, may be confused with meningitis or encephalitis or cerebral malaria. And patients with respiratory distress uh, may be misdiagnosed as pneumonia, whereas in fact the respiratory distress may be a complication of malaria. So it is critically important that there is a high index of suspicion for malaria in anybody who has fever, flu-like illness, plus a travel to a malaria area or residence in a malaria area. And in these patients, it is malaria until disproved, irrespective of the time of year or visit to or residence in a low-risk area or if prophylaxis has been taken. <laughs>